And thanks to the organizers for the invitation to Kela. So I'm very glad to be here. So today I'm going to talk about principally about the, the master thesis of one of my students, Felipe Barros, who has been exploring these uh, active carpets in thin films. So let me, okay. Hey. Okay, so in my talk, I will refer a lot about to micro swimmers. So for us, micro swimmers, we will consider them as flagellated microorganisms that exert a flow field. So all the fluctuations that we will measure and everything that you see, transport and so on, is only due to the hydrodynamic distortions that our micro swimmers exert to the water column. Uh, we will consider micro swimmers as dipole uh, forces, so they could, could be either uh, pullers or pushers. So when we talk about pullers, we can think about microalgae uh, who exert these kind of flows to 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 the to to fluids. And when when we consider them as pushers, you can think about bacteria. Okay, so in either way, these micro swimmers are considered at the low Reynolds number regime, and and so therefore we will consider the overdamp limit for uh, the micro swimmers movement and also for the hydrodynamics that we will solve. So our motivation is principally <clears throat> that micro swimmers, when they are close to surfaces or interfaces, they try to accumulate or they feel an attraction towards them and then they accumulate on these surfaces. So this accumulation might be due to different um, contributions. One of these contributions, it's purely hydrodynamic. And this could be due to the fact that they, when they are close to non-slip surfaces, they uh, perform this circle swimming in the surface right. or, see, yeah, no, okay. Or, and, and yes, so in terms of this, uh, this long exploration towards the surfaces generates accumulation in the walls, okay? And this accumulation, it's also of, it has been observed in at free surfaces, so at fluid interfaces like air and water interface. Okay. We can also think that micro swimmers are driver, uh, are, driv are driven by other kind of taxis. For instance, photo taxis. So if we think about microalgae in the ocean or in a lake or whatever in a in an environment water body, uh, they also can accumulate due to the phototaxis in the free surface, okay? And also due to the activity itself. So we know that when we have active particles or micro swimmers, they tend to accumulate in the interfaces or surfaces, like bacteria here in green inside micro size droplets. You can see that they are mostly all accumulated in the in the interface. Okay. Okay. So what we also know is that micro swimmers, in terms when they accumulate, they can cover large areas, and they can form these floating biofilms. So we are now interested in how these uh, floating biofilms. Um, shape their environment. So how the hydrodynamics that they can exert to the fluid affects suspended particles in the, in the fluid, present in the fluid. So we, we will consider that our micro swimmers are not accumulated in a freeze, in a, in a non-slip surface. So they are not forming like a, a biofilm in uh, in the top of a non-slip surface. We want to consider that our micro swimmers are suspended in a fluid interface. So this 
So this uh, formation, the film formation, let's say, could be also due to mechanical uh, response, okay? The thing is that we will consider them accumulated like here, like in a fluid interface, okay? So we, with my collaborators, we know that when we consider like a very thin uh, biofilm formation of micro swimmers, they affect the water column. For instance, in this work, we consider passive sedimentating particles in colors, the particles in colors here, and we allow them to, to sediment towards an active carpet. So our active carpet in this case was made of pusher-like microswimmers. And only due to the hydrodynamic fluctuations that the active carpet is exerting in the flow, you can see that the uh, passive particles start to steer and they, they, you can see that they are kind of mixing or something. Okay, so all this agita agitation in the passive particles is only due to the biogenic transport exerted by the active carpet. Okay, but now we are interested not in the problem of the active carpet accumulating in a non-slip surface. We want to study the case when the active carpet is formed uh, between two fluids. In particular, we are con we we are interested when these micro swimmers are accumulated between an air and another fluid uh, interface. So we will consider our micro swimmers forming a, a thin film here, at some uh, at some in some fluid with a different viscosity uh, to uh, compared to the fluid above them. Okay, so we can maybe think in this oil slicks, which accumulate bacteria inside, like here. Or we can also think of micro swimmers doing viscotaxis and then accumulating and then changing their environment uh, viscosity. Uh, for instance, some microalgae can do that. Or we can also maybe not think about like large uh, accumulation of microorganisms in maybe in in a water column we can also think about them inside our body and we can think that bacteria is accumulated between two fluids of different viscosity right okay so this is the problem so we have our micro swimmers forming a thin film uh, allow it, they are allowed to move only in 2D. This is one of our approximations. And they are accumulated here uh, at the fluid with viscosity mu2, mu1, okay? And we have a, a, above the active carpet, uh, below the active carpet, another fluid of viscosity mu2, okay? And over here, we have the free surface, okay? So what we are, we will do is that we will solve the hydrodynamics here above the active carpet, okay? And what we want to see is we want to see the effect of the film thickness, so this water column thickness, and also the relation between the two viscosity. So for us, this is a viscosity jump, and we want to see the effect. So it's more or less the effect of the confinement. So how the confinement affects the hydrodynamic steering due to an active carpet, okay? So for us, each micro swimmer, <clears throat> we will solve the hydrodynamic of each micro swimmer. So our micro swimmers is in a confined space between a free surface and a fluid fluid interface. And if we consider them as a, a pusher or, or a dipole force, in the far field approximation, we have to solve the, the boundary conditions. And then we got like an expression, a very complicated expression, but we solve it and we have it. And then this expression, it depends on the film thickness H and also on the viscosity ratio lambda. Okay, so <clears throat> yes. Okay, so now that we know how is the flow field of each micro swimmer, we can consider them in, a, in, a, in, in an active carpet. So for us, an active carpet 
Uh, it's an accumulation of these microswimmers in 2D. Uh, the, we are not solving hydrodynamic interactions between our microswimmers. Uh, what we do is to solve the hydrodynamic of a fluid parcel at some height uh, zeta zero above the active carpet. And there's no external flow field. And also we consider that our fluid parcel or our uh, tracer particles are not thermal. So we they are not fluctuating due to thermal uh, fluctuations. They only move due to hydrodynamic distortions. So if we solve, for instance, the uh, average velocity of a, for a fluid parcel at some height zeta zero, we can see that the average velocity is zero for this fluid parcel because of the construction of the active carpet. But if we measure the variance or the hydrodynamic fluctuations, we observe that it, they are not zero. And actually, if we plot these uh, hydrodynamic uh, fluctuations in terms of the different, at different heights from the active carpet, we can observe two important things for now is that the, the fluctuations are anisotropic. So it seems that the uh, vertical fluctuations are larger than the horizontal ones. So the fluctuations in these directions are more important somehow than in this direction. And the, the, the second thing is that they are decaying with height. Okay, so, but we can see, of course, another important thing is that they, they are not monotonic. So this is an, something new for us because in, a, in previous works with active carpets, we observe a different trend that the, fluct, uh, flu, the hydrodynamic fluctuations decay with, C, with zeta zero. So the case uh, when you are getting farther from the active carpet, these fluctuations are decaying uh, at different uh, radius. Okay, depending if we are close to a non-slip surface like here, or if we are close to a free surface like here. But we also can observe that they are still anisotropic and so on. So what is new? It seems that confinement on shapes the hydrodynamic fluctuations in a different way. So now these hydrodynamic fluctuations are non-monotonic. And the nice thing is that we can find a, a point here, uh, a theoretical point, if you want to think about where this fluctuation crosses. So in one area, we can think that close to the active carpet, vertical fluctuations are more important, but then at some point, horizontal fluctuations become larger. Okay, so this is close to the free surface. Now we'll be more clear. Okay, so remember that our active carpet is placed at one, and then we are solving the zeta zero farther from the active carpet, and over here we have a free surface. Okay, so what are the consequences of this uh, non-monotonic response? So we, we first check uh, all the alternatives for different uh, fluid uh, thickness, okay? H, capital H, and also how lambda impact this crossing point. And these are the results. So we can see here, where is the crossing point of these uh, hydrodynamic distortions or fluctuations? So we observe that um, when H is small, so when we have a very thin film, okay? So when we have a, th a thin film, our zeta star is closer, is smaller, right? So it's closer to the active carpet. So when you have a very thin film, your zeta star is moving towards the active carpet. And when you have larger thin, uh, uh, film thickness, your crossing point mo moves toward the free surface, okay? And lambda also impacts uh, this behavior and it's maybe it's more difficult to see, but it seems that when you have a small lambda, um, depending on age, you will have sometimes 
uh, the, the crossing point closer to the active carpet or either the free surface. But the important thing is that it seems that age impact more this, uh, this behavior. Okay, so what we did next, uh, it was to put an, a tracer particle now, and we will allow this tracer particle to move. So we started with a, a starting position theta zero, and we allowed the particle to move. We saw different active carpets, so we allow the particle to move only to the aerodynamic distortions. And what we observe is the particle dispersion, it changed depending at which height the particle is moving. So as we expect, we got this, this different shape of the, hydro, uh, of the particle dispersion. So particles closer to the active carpet move more in the vertical direction. When we are uh, placed exactly at the crossing point, we can observe that the dispersion is homogeneous. And when we are farther from the crossing point and close to this free surface, we observe that the particle dispersion is more spread to the sides. Okay, to, to the plane. This is nice because this might impact, for, for example, mixing properties in the in the water column or so on. So what we did next is to measure the velocity per correlations between two tracer particles. So we will put these two tracer particles at some height theta zero above the active carpet, and we will place them at different distance d zero horizontally. And we will solve the pair velocity uh, correlation function. And we will solve particularly the horizontal uh, pair correlation and the vertical pair correlation. Okay, for, for different d zeros and theta zeros. And please remember that we also have the confinement effect. So we will solve this for different capital H and different lambdas. So what we observe is that, okay, the parallel uh, velocity correlations decay exponentially um, quite fast, not super fast, as you can see here. So depending on the film thickness, we can observe different velocities of, um, of different uh, decayments for, for, for the pair correlation in the horizontal uh, plane. And they are very um, slow. So you can see that the pair correlations decay very slowly, even at distance D0, 10 times compared with the uh, film thickness. So it's very, so we can think that the particles in the horizontal plane, they are really, really um, synchronized. So they are moving mostly in the same direction. And only when they are really far, they decorrelate, okay? But in the vertical direction, it's different. When particles are uh, at distance more or less the same size of the confinement, they decorrelate. So when they are very close to each other, they are moving like synchronously. And when they are going farther, they at some points are completely decorrelated. And actually at some point, they are like one is going up and the other is going down. So we are wondering what is the this effect when this decorrelation happens. So what we did is to measure how decorrelated uh, they can be depending on our two uh, confinement parameters, H and lambda. And we observe here something interesting. So again, when the system is super confined, we observe that we get larger uh, explorations uh, below here. So the decorrelation is larger. And when the thin, uh, thin films, uh, film thickness is larger, this decorrelation stops. It's, it, it doesn't appear anymore. And we can also observe the effect of lambda. So the, the viscosity radio. Okay, so for small viscosity radios here, or when the one film is, is, is more viscous than the other one, we observe that we can also uh, trigger this response, like this decorrelation, and also when it's larger. So what are the consequences of this per correlation? 
So the consequences is that we can observe roll-like formations, okay? So what we measure first, we measure the um, vertical velocity in our film. So you can see here that we choose uh, capital H and lambda, and then we measure the uh, the vertical velocity at different uh, height zeta zero. So remember that for us, the active carpet is more or less in zeta zero one, and here in zeta zero 20 or 22 is the free surface. And when we plot the velo vertical velocity, we plot them uh, in terms of when it's negative, we will see that this is blue, and when it's positive, it's red or yellow. And you observe like a large area here where the velocity is going down and then it's going up. Okay, so for us, this looks like a roll-like formation. And it seems also that this roll-like formation, it's comparable with the system size, with the th film thickness. Then we measure the vorticity and we observe that the vorticity and the X plane is more or less homogeneous, but then in the Y and in the theta plane, we can observe these rolls formations. We can observe that the vorticity in one side is positive and in the other side is more or less negative. And then in the set direction, which is the is this is this direction above the active carpet, we can observe that again we have a, a very large roll in the positive direction here and two small uh, ones in the negative direction here. Um, for, for, so, Francisca, just uh, to let you know, about four, four more minutes or so. Yes, yes, I'm finishing. Yes, yeah, so this is the principal result. So what is the, our future work? So now we are thinking, okay, now that we know that there, there is this roll-like formation and the particle dispersity is, uh, is heterogeneous, we will, probably have maybe mixing, that the, our active carpet is exerting some kind of mixing in the environment. And we want to measure this in terms of the perdiffusivity, for instance. We know that an active carpet can generate perdiffusivity. This is a, another problem that we, I solved with, the, we solved with another student for a different uh, system. But uh, we can see that an active carpet made of dipoles can generate this pair diffusivity. So we would like to solve it in this problem for different film thickness and for different lambdas. So to finish, I want to thank my collaborators, so Arnold, Rodrigo, and Hugo, and my two students, Gabriel and Felipe. And thanks for your attention.